Cleveland Cavs reporter for ESPN, Dave Mc McNaniman, got the defollow button. I wonder what that's like. Is Dave on the phone line right now, Chris Brockman? Is he, he on is. the phone line? The reason why I ask you is this is, a, is this a Syracuse connection that it brought is. Dave to this it program? Is. Dave, are you there? You there, Dave? I'm here. So hey, how did, guys. How did you find out you got defollowed by uh, LeBron, Dave? I was actually in the uh, media workroom at Quicken Loans Arena writing a story on the unfollow gate, whatever you want to call it. And we were kind of looking back at his, his Twitter timeline and, I was telling one of my colleagues who works for Cleveland.com that, you know, I think he was following 167 people and now he's down to 159. And so, you know, he must have followed, you know, a handful of people. We were saying how we were all going to write it in our stories. Yeah. And one of the other journalists who works for the Akron Beagle Journal, uh, Jason Lloyd, says, no, he's actually down to 153 now and he's not following you anymore. <laughs> so sometime post game, huh. as we were writing our stories, uh, I got the old uh, unfollow. So are, are you going to use uh, crucial real estate that you might be given with LeBron post-game at all to say, why'd you defollow me? Are you going to go there, Dave, possibly with LeBron? Uh, no, I really I don't think there's a, a need to go down that road. Okay. Like, I'm not like a scorned Twitter lover or something like that in this scenario. He did make kind of a joke about it yesterday. In the, the media scrum, he finished his comments and then kind of like tapped me on the shoulder as he walked away and said, oh, yeah, I unfollowed you, too, um, in front of all the – yeah, so. Oh, I he mean, did – so it, he's aware. He is aware. Is he the one actually hitting the unfollow button, Dave? Is he in charge of this? Is he really that on top of it? Yeah, think? by my understanding, LeBron, unlike many other athletes, is not someone who hands over his social media accounts to, you know – uh, someone on his team or, or some coordinator. Uh, my understanding, everything he does on there is through himself. Hmm. So Dave McMahon, Dave McManaman uh, of ESPN.com covers the Cleveland Cavaliers, one of the defollowed trio of reporters uh, nationally uh, to de -follow, be defollowed by LeBron, joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. So what is happening here, Dave? What, what is happening? Because the subtext of all of this is that LeBron has wanderlust, and that his return to Cleveland um, isn't a permanent one. What, what, what should we make of all this, from your estimation? Yeah, I don't think that's an overreaction. I think that's why, uh, part of the reason why there's been such a response to this seemingly innocuous move. Uh, but when you have close to 30 million followers on Twitter, and then you also have the subtext of you are the guy who left this franchise in the lurch um, just five, six years ago, I think that's why uh, there's been, been such an interest. I, I don't think that this is an impending sign of he's about to pack up his bags and go back to Miami, um, you know, come the off season if things don't go right in terms of winning a championship. Uh, I, I really cannot explain to you the motivation to originally unfollow, you know, AC and Allie Clifton and the Cavs account. That's still a mystery to me, but this is somewhat consistent of what he's done in the past off seasons, or excuse me, past post seasons where he just, you know, kind of parses down the social media activity. Um, he has in the past shared videos, one through a, a Samsung app last year through uninterrupted. It sounds like this year he's going to use Snapchat to share videos, but on those type of sharings, he doesn't have the, the comments and the at mentions on his Twitter account that could cloud his, his thinking. Um, so, it's bizarre. Uh, I agree with that completely. Whether this is, you know, flashing red lights and, and everybody needs to cut their heads because we're going to go through the decision part three, I, I'm not so sure that's what this is all about. Well, but he did tell Howard Beck, again, this is fresh. I mean, this was just posted uh, on Bleacher Report's Twitter account, um, you know, within moments, basically saying, I would actually take a pay cut to do that, playing with. Uh, Carmelo, Dwayne Wade, and Chris Paul, which I imagine yeah, I now heard. sets off sets off a sets off a, 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 a stink bomb in the Knicks locker room, and maybe even with the Clippers, who have a pretty darn big game tonight at Golden State. Yeah, I, I heard you kind of teasing that story. I hadn't read it yet. Uh, Howard was in town, so I, I kind of thought that's where he was going um, when I saw him get in time with LeBron. But you know, I guess who's to say that's not that wouldn't occur in Cleveland? Ah, uh -huh. is that 
<laughs> so, so I guess Kyrie goes, Paul comes, Dwayne Wade joins. Uh, that boy, that'd be that... love for Carmelo. I mean, I'm not saying that, that that's going to happen, but that that's something that it looked like around the All Star break when Frank Isola had that story uh, about the the Cavs and Knicks having some dialogue revolving around Kevin Love and Carmelo Anthony. That kind of would have been, you know, the first domino to fall. Uh, obviously, the Cavs have felt pretty confident in their lineup of Kyrie, Kevin Love, and LeBron when healthy. Uh, there's something around like 60 and eight since last year's uh, middle of the season. Um, so they wanted to give that lineup a chance to succeed in the postseason. But all bets are off. The Cavs, you know, falter come April through June, and. Um, I mean, of course, the Cavs franchise would have to be interested in, in seeing that, you know, kind of unprecedented lineup uh, to fruition. Yeah. You know, i got to be honest with you. I'm with uh, Dave McMenamin of uh, ESPN.com, who was defollowed by LeBron on Twitter here on the Rich Eisen Show. I'm sorry to continuously reset you with that <laughs> moniker, Dave. You know, I mean, I respect you and your work a little bit, you know, more than that. But... Um, I got to be honest with you, Dave. I didn't think that Cleveland would be in a, a spot where all of them arrive. I, I, don't, I don't know if that's uh, if that's what that reads into or anything like that. But I guess that's a possibility, right? You know. Well, I guess if you just look at their assets that they would have to be able to acquire uh, the other pieces, I think they 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 have more readily available. Um, you know, the Clippers do as well, of course. Um, and then for LeBron in his contract situation. He can opt out, um, I guess, it, which would allow him to take a pace to cut to go out elsewhere. Um, but it, it could also, you know, he could facilitate opening up cap space in Cleveland. Um, quite frankly, I haven't read Howard's story yet, so I no, can't, no, no. I mean, it, seriously, you know, it is, it is, it is fresh, and um, and and it could be nothing more than him just saying, "Hey, man, that would be incredible. I'd love to play with those guys." And it doesn't really speak. You know, anything as you, you know, NBA stars say something, Any anybody of his magnitude in any sport says something, we're going to read into it, right? Right, Dave? I mean, right. we're going to read everything into it. And there's ways of saying, you know, he, he'd much rather play with them because they're his best friends. And now suddenly Kevin Love and Kyrie Irving and whatever else say, well, what about us? I mean, we're the ones trying to, we're the brotherhood right now, right? Right. Uh, or you could just say, hey, just why wouldn't, a, a, an absolute megastar of the game want to play with three others and try and win it, right? I mean, yeah, I guess it, it's, it's completely different saying, like, I would do it versus I want to do it. Right. Um, and also, you could also say that you know, he's already kind of put his money where his mouth is. How many summers has he given up where he could be making money at the court and endorsements or film deals or whatever, and he's giving it up to do USA basketball and play with those guys? Um, so I guess he has, in some extent, sacrifice money to play with those guys in the past. Well, Dave, you sound like, uh, you sound fine, like a man who's been defollowed <laughs> by one of the all-time greats in the history of the sport and, and social media users. You sound fine, Dave. You sound like well, you're getting you through know, it. I, I covered the Lakers before. I've been through this with Kobe. Did he <laughs> defollow you? Did... And then, yeah, Kobe did. But I got to shout out D Dirk Nowitzki and Steve Nash, two all-time greats. They filled my back. As far as I know, they still follow me. So Wait a know, minute, Dave. I guess those... So you're saying you have been followed and defollowed on Twitter now by both Kobe and LeBron? That's happened now? It, it's some kind of distinction. Yeah, it might go with my epitaph, but <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> that's something that's happened to me. It sounds, you know, like that, that Seinfeld line of it's not you, it's it's me. It, i got to go <laughs> at this point in time. I mean, it, I'm, I'm this is a trend, here, Dave. For sure. Yeah, well... Well, what Dave, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to follow you on Twitter now. <laughs> Good deal. I think every, I think that, so what is your Twitter address, Dave? Let's get you the it followers at, back. It's at McTen, M-C-T-E-N. Okay. Nice and we, easy. the Rich Eisen Show listenership and viewership, we have your back, Dave. Okay? Pick me up. Pick yeah, me and, up. and then when LeBron, let us know when LeBron follows you again, then we'll all en masse defollow you. Okay? <laughs> okay. Okay, Dave? That's a fair deal. That's a deal. Uh, yep. Thanks for joining. I appreciate it. All right, thank you. There's Dave McManaman, VSPN.com. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.